In the United Kingdom today, approximately 40 people will be directly affected by fire. Out of those 40, at least two will die. And the same will happen every day of the year. 13,000 people are injured and 800 people are killed in some 450,000 fires each year across the country. Fires not only destroy people's lives, but they also strike at business. Every year, fires account for nearly one billion pounds worth of losses. The financial and human cost of fire is immense. But despite knowledge of the tragedy that fires can cause, they still happen and over a third of all fires are caused by arson. As individuals, we can directly reduce the amount of arson attacks. The most effective method against arson is to make vigilant security arrangements. However, if we want to reduce the costs of fires, whether started deliberately or not, we must all be able to identify, understand, and react to the situations in which fires may either start or which may help them to spread. You are now going to see a sequence of numbered scenes during which the action will be frozen and a question asked. Please write your answers on the paper provided. Firstly, what would you do if you discovered smoke like this? Would you open the door and investigate? Or would you find a suitable extinguisher and investigate? Or would you raise the alarm and evacuate the building? When making an emergency call to the fire brigade, what information should you have available to pass on to them? You're in your workplace when the fire alarm sounds. What action should you take? What do you think the consequence of this action might be? What action would you take and what fire extinguisher would you use in this situation? Which of these extinguishers should be used on this fire? Which of the following is responsible for causing the most deaths from fires? Is it panic? smoke or the fire itself. There now follows five pictures listed A to E. Can you identify what's wrong in each picture?
Let's take each of those questions in turn and look at the correct action in each case. Firstly, what would you do if you discovered smoke like this? The correct procedure is to check that the door is closed, but be careful as the handle could be hot. Do not open the door. Raise the alarm either by locating the nearest alarm point or by shouting fire. Once staff are alerted, the fire brigade must be called. The fire brigade will want to know certain information about the incident so that they are prepared for it when they arrive. It's important that you're ready with the answers. They'll want to know the address of the fire, details involved and the location of the fire and the telephone number you're calling from. Whenever you hear the fire alarm evacuation signal, you should stop what you're doing, switch off any machinery you are using, and quickly but calmly leave the building by the nearest escape route, and proceed to the designated assembly point for your department. Do not stop to pick up your belongings. Do not use the lifts, and remember to close all doors behind you as you leave, but do not lock them. Under no circumstances re-enter the building until you're told, either by evacuation warden or by the fire brigade, that it's safe to do so. This is a particularly unthinking action. Only laziness can be the reason why he doesn't use an ashtray. Ashtrays are provided for a reason. Smoking is the second most frequent cause of fires. Nearly a quarter of all fires are smoking related. Many places now operate a no-smoking policy, and you can see why. If there is a no-smoking policy in force where you work, then it should be obeyed. A quick cigarette in a discreet corner of the warehouse is probably more of a fire hazard than smoking openly where it's allowed. Usually where a no-smoking policy exists, there will be a room set aside specifically for those who wish to smoke. This is a minor electrical fire that could easily develop into something more dangerous. The correct action in a situation like this is to turn the power off, then use a carbon dioxide extinguisher to put the fire out. It would have been possible to use an AFFF spray extinguisher as an alternative, but only after the power had been turned off. It's important that the electrical equipment has been isolated before you use an AFFF spray extinguisher. Because of the danger of electrical shock, from contact with wetted surfaces once the extinguisher has been discharged. For fires involving flammable liquids, dry powder, AFFF spray or carbon dioxide can be used. Normally dry powder or AFFF spray will be provided for such risks as are the most effective in dealing with fires of this type. These extinguish liquid fires by smothering the burning surface and depriving the fire of oxygen. Usually, people evacuating a building do so in a calm and orderly fashion, frequently because they can't see the cause of their evacuation. Panic is therefore not a major factor in causing fatalities, nor is the fire itself. Most people are able to stay well away from any flames. However, suffocation from the inhalation of the toxic products of combustion that are present in smoke is a major threat to life and is the greatest cause of deaths from fires. Fire safety in the workplace can be compromised by the selfish and negligent attitudes of others. This may take the form of obstruction of escape routes or access to firefighting equipment. A typical example is the propping open of doors often by removing fire extinguishers from their brackets and using them as doorstops. Fire doors are there to safeguard escape routes from the effects of fire and should be kept closed. Alarm call points are vital to warn of danger. Obscuring them can result in them being overlooked in an emergency and a delay occurring when the time to raise the alarm is crucial. All staff should be familiar with the location of the nearest fire alarm point and its method of operation.
Fire equipment must not be moved from its locations or be obstructed. Portable fire extinguishers will normally be found adjacent to exit doors or on escape routes in positions that are conspicuous and easily accessible. They should be located either in recesses or on brackets so as to be readily available in the event of fire. Fire exits provide an alternative means of escape in the event of fire and are essential for the safety of the occupants of the building. It's important, therefore, that fire exits are kept free from obstruction and are not secured or fastened in any way that prevents their immediate use in an emergency. Fire extinguishers can save life and reduce fire losses. Never remove them except for use on fire and ensure that they're replaced with charged extinguishers. If you find extinguishers missing, report it. The railway industry has four types of fire extinguisher. It's important that you know how to use them and know which extinguisher to use on what type of fire. It's also an important part of fire safety to be familiar with the various types of portable fire extinguisher to be found in the workplace, their location and the method of operation of each. While some extinguishers can be safely used on more than one type of fire, others can be dangerous if used to extinguish a fire for which they're not suitable. Each type can be identified by its distinctive colour. It's important to select the correct extinguisher for each type of fire. However, before looking at each one of these in detail, it's important for your own personal safety to understand a few basic ground rules for the use of fire extinguishers. Firstly, it must be remembered that portable fire extinguishers are designed to fight small outbreaks of fire. If one extinguisher cannot control or extinguish the fire, the fire is beyond the capability of portable equipment and you should stop fighting the fire and evacuate. Rule 1. Only fight the fire if it's safe to do so. All fires produce smoke and toxic products of combustion which can rapidly reduce visibility and create an irrespirable atmosphere. Fighting a fire inside a building is more difficult than a fire in the open. Rule 2. Always keep yourself between the fire and your escape route. Rule 3. Do not fight fires in confined spaces. Regardless of the type of fire extinguisher being used, a fire which is being supported by heat from an electrical current cannot be successfully extinguished until the current has been isolated. Rule 4. When dealing with fires involving live electrical equipment, isolate the supply before tackling the fire. It should also be appreciated that most extinguishers have features common to each in the way they're operated. All extinguishers are fitted with a device to prevent accidental operation, which on modern types is a pin retained on a chain or a plastic clip. On modern types, operation is by a squeeze grip or trigger, which also controls the discharge. Crouch down to get below the level of heat and smoke. Operate the extinguisher by removing the safety pin and squeezing the trigger. Keep at least two meters away from the fire. This is a water extinguisher and it's suitable for use on fires involving combustible solids. That is, those involving materials such as wood, paper, textiles. Water extinguishers must not be used on fires involving live electrical equipment or those involving inflammable liquids. Keeping an eye on the fire at all times, direct water at the base of the flames. Move around it so that you're putting water in at several points and work the jet up through the fire as it begins to die down. The AFFF spray extinguisher can also be used on a solid fire. This extinguisher has been developed specifically for the railway industry as an effective multi-purpose extinguisher. As such, it's suitable for many flammable liquid fires where the foam solution forms a liquid seal over the entire surface of the burning liquid thereby excluding any oxygen and extinguishing the fire. It's likely that there will initially be a small flare-up of the fire as the first jet hits the flames. This is quite normal and you should be prepared for it to happen. Direct the spray in a sweeping action across the surface of the fire. The foam will float over the surface of the liquid and form a seal to extinguish the fire. 
A dry powder extinguisher can also be used on flammable liquid fires such as this one. Pull out the safety pin and squeeze the trigger. There will be a short delay before the pressure disc bursts. Then aim the powder at the front of the fire. Use a sweeping motion from side to side to spray the powder over the fire until it's extinguished. As dry powder doesn't have a cooling effect, reignition may occur, particularly if the surface is disturbed. If we look again at this container fire, we can see that the flames are just beginning to creep down the right-hand side to the ground and could easily develop into a flammable liquid spill fire. A dry powder extinguisher is again the best type to use on this kind of fire. Use it in the same way as before. Crouch down and approach from downwind. Pull out the safety pin and squeeze the trigger, aiming the powder at the base of the fire nearest you. Continue to spray the powder in a sweeping motion from side to side, up the spill, away from you, taking care that the fire doesn't reignite up behind you. Continue like this until the fire is out. It will be seen that these extinguishers discharge the powder in the form of a fine dust cloud, and in a confined space, visibility may be impaired. A carbon dioxide extinguisher can be used on all types of fire, but it's most suitable for fires involving live electrical equipment, as the gas doesn't conduct electricity. Pull out the safety pin, raise the horn to a near horizontal level, and squeeze the trigger. You will need to be close to the equipment to ensure the gas enters all the spaces. However, we need to be aware of the dangers of carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide is an asphyxiant gas and therefore its use in confined spaces presents a breathing hazard. As the gas is discharged from the extinguisher, it will form dry ice on the end of the discharge horn, the base of the main body and the swivel union between the body and the discharge horn. Do not hold these positions. There is one particular type of contained flammable liquid fire that's very common in the home as well as at work, the chip pan fire. Fires in deep fat fryers are not uncommon in mess rooms and this simulation typifies the kind of fire that can occur when the oil or fat becomes overheated. Fiberglass fire blankets are designed to be used on these small contained fires. Simply approach the fire with a blanket held up in front of you to protect yourself from the heat and carefully place over the top of the container. This will quickly suffocate the fire and put it out. It's important to immediately switch off the heat source and to leave the blanket in place until the container has cooled. Otherwise, as soon as you remove it, the fire will reignite. You may wonder why it's so important to use the right extinguisher for the right type of fire. Well, this is how quickly a flammable liquid fire can take hold and turn into quite a serious fire. A matter of seconds. So prompt action is needed to stop it spreading further. But this is what happens if the wrong type of extinguisher is used. It's important for your safety, for the safety of your colleagues and of the public, that you know and understand how and when to use the correct fire extinguisher. Water extinguishers are coloured red and should be used only on solid fires except those involving electricity. AFFF spray extinguishers can be used on all types of fire, including electrical equipment, as long as the power has been isolated beforehand. Dry powder extinguishers should be used on flammable liquid fires, whether contained or not. Carbon dioxide extinguishers are most suited to small contained fires or for fires in electrical equipment. For the smaller contained flammable liquid fires, a fiberglass blanket is usually sufficient. The threat of fire will undoubtedly continue to be one of the many hazards encountered in the workplace. But with adequate training in the everyday common sense precautions that can be taken to minimize the risk of fire, together with a knowledge of the use and operation of portable fire equipment, we can make a positive contribution to fire safety in the workplace.